welcome friends to this monthly meeting i'm very happy to see all of you again here every time i look at you you look like my children just because of my age when you turn 92 everybody looks like they're young i found some students of mine they came from india and they had white beards and white hair and they said we are your students like your children i said yes yes you are my children i said 92 92 you are my children <laughs> i meet all kinds of people very interesting people some people i meet are called atheists atheists means they don't believe in god they don't believe there is any spirituality even they believe life is a physical life we are born we have our destiny we live we die that's the end of the matter there is nothing before our birth nothing after our death so many are like that i have very nice discussions with them one atheist wrote to me it's very important for me to see you and i have to travel a long distance he to spend a lot of money on an air fare to see me so he came after spending so much money and he met me in one of the other countries not here he said i have come to tell you i am an atheist i don't believe in god i don't believe in heaven i don't believe there are any such things and uh, i don't think it is necessary to believe all these things i think it is a waste of time i smiled and said if that is so why have you come to see me what was the need to come to come all the way spend all your money to come and see me any answer for that he said i just wanted to share this with you i said you know i i believe in god i believe in higher powers i believe in a creative power i believe it's all inside we are believing in very different things what made you come to see me with so much conviction you have he said i have no idea why i have come to see you when i don't believe in any of your teachings why have i come to see you i said i'll give you an answer but please spend time on that you have two things in your head not one you think you have the mind that thinks and that's it no there's something more i call it soul some people call it higher mind some people call it higher consciousness doesn't matter what the name is they are definitely two things and they don't function together at all they work independently i said your mind said you don't believe in anything your soul said i have to go and find out it was your soul that brought you to me not your mind your mind want to convince even the soul but still you came that is so important that we do not recognize that there is an intuitive self in us which tells us which told him go and see him and find out what he can say and there was a mind saying not necessary to go i don't believe in all that and yet the soul took over and he came to see me so when we realize that there are two things functioning in us we can with that awareness that we have something more than our thinking mind begin to use more of the other faculties we have which belong only to the soul they don't belong to the mind intuition that comes without thinking that you come to know something just by because you know it's very often you say i know this thing how do you know i don't know how i know it but i know it where does that come from this knowledge that comes from without thinking where does it come from the only way we know where knowledge is stored and we can pick it up is from the mind and yet there is some knowledge that comes to us which is define what the knowledge of the mind is and yet we don't listen to it we have somehow not only given great respect and undue importance to the mind we have almost become slaves of the mind 
we think the only way to know anything is by thinking about it the only way to gather knowledge is through thinking and through the mind we have even identified ourselves in the mind we believe the i is the mind the self is the mind i think therefore i am this has become almost built into us and very difficult to get out of it but if somebody can tell us look into yourself and see the difference between what your soul is trying to do what your mind is trying to do and they are not doing the same thing look at both i am not saying don't use the mind i say use the mind listen to the mind use the mind as necessary but don't forget that there is something else providing you information and knowledge which is not mental and is not logical not reasonable it doesn't go with the mind's processes you got the mind got explained those awarenesses now it is in everybody's life that we have a gut feeling a hunch an intuitive intuitive knowledge we ignore it why because when that comes the mind steps in to argue against it that doesn't make sense it is not logical therefore reject it and we are rejecting true knowledge coming from that source which can hold and create all knowledge now that's a big statement i'm making that there is something in us which can hold and create all knowledge and it's not the mind the mind functions on very limited data but the unlimited data also exists in us and beyond the mind the main reason why we say find yourself is to discover a true self a true self which is the soul not the mind so long as we keep on identifying ourselves with the mind we are it's like a wall we create between ourselves and all experiences all knowledge everything is being walled up by relying only on the mind that is why it's very important to sometimes sit quietly in a meditative state and watch the mind how does it function because the mind never stops functioning the mind's main function is thinking it never stops thinking therefore if you close your eyes sit quietly and say i am not going to think anything but thinking will still go on okay then i am not going to think then who is thinking my mind is thinking then you sit quietly completely quietly and listen to your mind you'll be surprised how the mind functions you'll be amazed just one experiment to watch your mind how it functions will change your whole opinion about yourself that you are not the mind just by watching your mind in a meditative state so when we talk of meditation we have almost reduced the concept of meditation to a ritual oh you get some mantra from some guru and you close eyes think of the whole world and keep on repeating the words of okay, heaven beads in your hand mala in your hand and keep on repeating and that's good meditation and after some time you get tired sometimes you don't get tired you may feel a little better the mind says that was a good thing keep on doing it and we say that's a good thing it's very keep on doing it the mind is a good advisor mind is not a good advisor on discovering yourself because when you discover yourself you are in fact breaking the wall of the mind and that is why you can't rely on the mind for discovering yourself you can rely to some extent in fact to a large extent on your intuition on your gut feelings on what you know without thinking that's very important so i wanted to share this with you because that atheist of course became a great follower and even asked for initiation after only one or two sessions of meetings he thought he was a complete non believer and he became a believer just by understanding that there are two parts of himself and he never thought there is another part of himself so that's why it's important to make meditation an experience of self discovery not a ritual not doing it my guru told me do this i am doing it what did you why did the guru tell you to do it did he not say to discover yourself to discover the truth 
If you are repeating something without discovering the truth, you are not doing what the Guru told you. Therefore, you must go sit inside. Sit inside. You have a very nice place to sit inside. People love to sit in their outside chairs. I've got a nice chair here. But the chair inside is much better than this chair, I can tell you. Why? Because I can imagine any chair I like. I can't change this here. Even with my best imagination, I can't change the chair, physical chair I'm sitting on. I can change the chair inside any time I like. I'll pick up the best one I've ever seen. Or I'll make an even improvement on the chair which I haven't seen. I'll sit on that inside. Any one of you can sit on that chair. Because we have the great power of imagination. We have great power to create an image inside. Close your eyes so that you don't have to see only what is outside. Close your eyes. Close your ears. Don't depend upon what you are seeing and hearing from outside. Listen to what you are doing inside, in your imagination. You will say, are we doing an imaginary exercise? Looks like that. Till you find something little more than that. And the little more than that is, where does imagination come from? When we imagine something, is it totally something new that is coming or is it existing somewhere from where we are picking it up? That answer you will be able to get with a little more exercise. Not merely imagining there, but imagining things happening there. Getting so involved in doing things imaginatively inside that you forget what outside chair you are sitting on. You forget where your legs and hands are. You forget where your body is. That body which you create with your imagination, which is the body creating the imagination. You don't create a body with imagination. If you create a body with imagination, that's just a symbol in front of you. No, the one that is looking at the created image, that's inside. If you can forget the outside and sit there inside, you will be able to see that you can absorb yourself in so many activities. You can even meditate inside. You can have discussions inside. You can have a party inside. You can call on your friends inside. So long as you are doing that in the wakeful state, not in dream state, not in a lower level of awareness, in the current level of awareness of wakeful state, if you do that, you will pull your attention away from what is happening outside and put your attention what is happening inside. Then you discover a remarkable thing. You discover the so-called imagination was not as imaginary as you thought. That the imagination pulls every bit of information and imagination from an inner, inner world, inner world that exists inside, we call the astral world. A new, new universe exists inside. A universe in which you do not have any physical matter. Because imagination doesn't have any physical matter. The universe there doesn't have any physical matter. But it has all the sense perceptions. You can see, touch, taste, smell, do everything that you can do here with your senses, with your sense perceptions, but no physical matter, no molecules, no atoms. Everything is possible inside. And since you can imagine things that you cannot do physically, the extent of abilities you have increases many fold. You can fly easily. Anybody can just close eyes and say, I'm flying. A sky opens up inside. With your eyes closed, as you fly in the sky, you can go anywhere. I have had experiments with people. I said, put on more light in your room. I give them a little kind of light that you put your button up and it brighter, it becomes brighter. They can make it brighter than any light they've seen outside. If imagination can create that kind of light inside, imagine what is inside. So don't take the imagination to be as imaginary as we believe because we have rooted our awareness into one reality. This physical reality is the only reality. It's not. Discover for yourself. Don't believe anybody. This is not something that I believe so and so said it. Now I'm leading my normal life here. I'm going through the suffering of this life. Bad karma I have got. That's not good enough. Go in and see. What is karma? Find out what is karma. Who made it? 
How does it work? Are the answers available inside? Absolutely. 100% answers are available if you go inside. Just a little more exercise. Not the imaginary self. Go beyond. Meditate with the imaginary self and see what is behind the eyes of that imaginary self. When you sit here in the physical body and you close your eyes, you can imagine yourself there. What about closing your eyes in the imaginary self? And then say, what is behind that? If you can do that, needs practice. I'm trying to make it sound very simple. It is simple, but not easy. It's not easy because of our constant experience rooted into one physicality, one physical reality. That's the problem. If you're willing to be open, let me examine what else is there, then you will be able to close your inner eyes and see the very source of all karma, the very source of all destiny, the very source why things are happening the way they are happening here. You will get answers to all your questions. I have not found a single question anybody can ask which is not answered within that point to everybody. You can all get it. Imagine the potential of what we can find inside. Now this is all because we are endowed with this thing. It's not something that we have to go to somebody to get it. We all have it. We are born with it. We are born with that endowment, with that wealth inside. And all we need is to go within with our attention. Because when we put attention anywhere, our focus, our experience goes there. I want to enjoy these flowers, for example, beautiful flowers. I touch them, I can feel even, I can even touch them and see them in my hands. Beautiful flowers. If I put my attention on them, for a moment I will not look, like to look this side, who is there? It's so automatic that the power of attention that we all have is a very great boon to us. Because when you put your attention on something, you can also concentrate your attention on that which you're putting in. The power to concentrate your attention enables you to withdraw your attention from elsewhere. This is a whole secret. There's no other secret of meditation except the power of attention to be concentrated where you want it and then become unaware of everything outside of it. When we put the attention within ourselves and concentrate it there, we become unaware of everything else except what is happening there. This is the secret of going to the first imaginary self, which is your astral self, which is your sensory self. That is only a self which, in which you feel you have all the sense perceptions intact. The self is still the same. Mind is still the same. Thinking is still the same. Life is still the same. No change. The only change is that you suddenly discover that your imaginary self inside is as real, maybe more real than the body that you had outside because the capability of functioning of that inner self is much more than of the physical body. It's a great delight to be able to pull attention sufficiently to become unaware of the outside body and be aware of the inside. If you go second step, you get all the knowledge you can ever get. You will have answers to all the questions you have ever asked or anybody else has ever asked. Can you imagine the storehouse of information and knowledge we carry, each one of us, inside our heads? We don't explore it. We just think this world is the only reality. Examine this. You have come here to discover something. Why were you so curious to come here? Most people who come to see me are not curious to find out what is there, they come here, we can't put up with this karma, we can't put up with this unhappiness, we can't put up with this loneliness, we can't put up with our illness, we can't put up with our diseases, we can't put up with disobedient children, we can't put up with old, old parents who don't listen to us, we can't put up with everything we can't put up with, everything is creating unhappiness for us, let's run to some, some place where we'll get some solace. That's an escape. We are to escape. We have made almost going to a spiritual path like escaping. It's almost like drinking alcohol. It's almost like taking a drug. That was not the real purpose at all. 
how many of us are curious to know who am I really? Don't they want to know who really I am? Is this body the only thing that I have? How did I have such a different kind of destiny than all my friends? How did I have a different destiny? Why was I born in a different rich home or poor home, unlike others? Who controlled this? Who was responsible for this? If we are all merely auto automatic creations, we should all be the same. We should be like automatic robots they are making. But we are so different, each one. Where does the difference come from? If the curiosity says, I should be able to find out how our destiny is so different, where are they made? Am I responsible? Somebody else has imposed upon me? Who is that clever guy who has put it all on me? If the curiosity leads to that, you can find the answers and satisfy your curiosity completely by going within your own self. No way else. Don't need to read any books. Don't need to go to any temple, any church, any synagogue, any mosque, any place of worship at all, except one place. There's your own head behind the eyes. Little area, small area in this body contains everything. Not the rest of the body is there just for living in a physical world. The rest of the body is just created so that you can have a functional self, a functional expression of yourself, a functional vehicle in which to live in this life. That's all. These are all centers of energy below us. There are circuitry of energy moving. There are physiological anatomy going on through us to sustain this body for a short period of time to have a small experience. Obviously, that is not you and your experience. It's a very short experience. They are investigating when the Big Bang took place in billions of years. How many billion light years we are going to see now in the past? And can we see the future? A physics professor has said yesterday that according to correct interpretation of Einstein, general theory of relativity, special theory of relativity, that past, present and future must coexist at the same time. This is not metaphysics, it's physics today. Physics say the nature of time space is such that they all have to exist together. If they all are already existing, do we have free will then? Is it already existing? Aren't all the events already there? Can we verify the statement of a scientist today? And a statement made by the metaphysics people much later, much the spiritual people have been making these statements for thousands of years. Can we check it out? Yes, we can. Answers lie all inside. We go inside. This is a serious subject, I know. That even scientific minds today are realizing the nature of time space. Whereas, if you go in, you will find the nature of time space. First of all, you will find that time precedes, in terms of time, time precedes space. If there is no time, you cannot have space. So, time precedes and generates within itself space. So that when time moves, it moves in space and therefore time space is created. It happens in the top part of what we call the causal plane, the mental plane in our heads. They are all creating it like that. And we can go and see how it's created. You can match any scientist with that knowledge if you go inside. So this is something that you can generate once it is created. It is true what the physics professor said today. It is true that past, present and future are created simultaneously. From a timeless state, which means there is no past, present and future, you generate a time space in which past, present and future exist together. And once they are together, it is easy then to have that timeline existing from infinity to infinity. To put anything upon it and what is placed upon it are experiences they call events. Events are placed upon the timeline. And this is all happening in the top of the causal plane where we have, souls have picked up a mind to generate experience. And it's the soul giving the conscious power to the mind to create it. And the mind creates a beautiful, great timeline 
space line on which events are placed. And the events are then connected with each other with a principle which is then introduced for that purpose called the principle of cause and effect. That we link the events, not randomly they are placed there, they are placed so that each event can be accounted for by a previous event. So that's a great way to generate a string of events all connected by cause and effect. So once they have done that, then we can have an experience of any one of those events. So when we look at the possibilities of events, they are also infinite. The timeline we have created is infinite, space is infinite, no end to it. And then we are putting infinite number of events on them. So when the soul wants any experience for which it has become a soul, which is another story I can tell you why soul came into being at all. That's another big story. But once the soul has come, which is consciousness, pure consciousness with the ability to be conscious of anything, it can then pick up anything from that created timeline. And any event that it picks up for experience becomes a life which it can experience directly. And it's wonderful to experience everything in a created past, present and future. We move all the time. We become time travelers. Once we become time travelers, we are experiencing those events directly as they were to further enhance the beauty of that experience. We separate perception that is taking place in the mind into five senses. We separate seeing from hearing. We separate smelling from taste and we separate the touch sense. We separate these senses so that what could be perceived directly by soul mind is now perceived by separate kind of sense perceptions which makes a variety of new experiences possible. And this state we call the astral state where we have all sense perceptions and mind which thinks and designs these things and we have experiences without a physical material world. Then to enhance the solidity of this reality, we create a physical world and create physical bodies, physical forms of life, so many types of life. We generate molecules that start making a hydrogen atom, simplest atom, just a matter, helium atom, other atom, periodic tables going on. We generate within the timeline a whole series of physical events. And we come in the middle to see it. It's very interesting how we come. We see that when we have created the events, who is seeing the events? We are seeing the events. From where are we seeing the events? From where we created it. If you create something here in front of you, you will see it above it or away from it because the creation is in front of you in space-time. Okay, now the creation is in front of you and you have created the drama of cause and effect here. You have created something that should be like your original. Absolutely like your original. Original was the design of the whole thing, including the soul, including the whole time frame, including space and time, including all the events. It's a very big creative power. It could have created anything. Therefore, it had absolute what we call free will. It had absolute free will to create anything it could. That totality, whatever it was that conscious power that generated souls, that generated minds, that generated sense perception, that created events on timeline, had absolute total free will. Now you say, at this level, where we have gone even into a physical reality, let's put that back. It didn't exist because we're watching it from the top. And we create a form of life, a species of life called human beings. A human being is defined in spirituality not as what form it has, what structure it has, what bio biological structure or anatomy it has. That's not the definition of a human being. You can design robots on the exact same physiology. 
same anatomy you can make up new robot they will make them the definition of a human being according to spirituality is he has the experience of free will the same experience that came at the top that means make a man in the image of the creator so here there were so many species of forms created on those events placed there in destiny and there was also human beings created human beings interacted with each other by cause and effect which we now call the law of karma it was merely a law to create a certain type of experience once that is done now we are watching the show very nice how about getting close to the show we watch drama here on the stage and we want to go on the front seat we pay more for the front seat than for the back why we like to be close to the show what did we do about the show that we created in front of us which we were watching with human beings interacting with each other we said let's get as close as possible and the closest we could get was get into the head of one of the characters we stepped in and became that person and now we can watch the show so beautifully everything is happening around us we are one of the characters on the store not so away from it at all what a beautiful setup that the setup which was created for us to have a variety of experiences experiences which are not only physical we can go further down into more artificial experiences by creating what is called dreams what are dreams dreams are we put this body physical body into a state of sleep and generate another being of ourselves another form of ourselves this form is sleeping on the bed another form of ourselves is moving around doing things good bad and strange a new destiny a dream destiny that we created right here and we are all experiencing that dream destiny as a means to remind us if you can create a dream and a destiny separate destiny in a dream don't you think this could also be dream and you could wake up more a simple hint the hint is coming that if we can create a dream experience right here and wake up from it and say oh that was just a dream is it not possible that experience we are having now could also be dream and we are sleeping somewhere else and if we wake up what will be like and since we have that strange gift of free will we think about it what should i do what can i do these questions would never have arisen if we didn't have the experience of free will but how does free will stand with the other knowledge of ours that past present and future are already fixed that all the destiny is already made we can't have a free will if the future is already fixed then how do we have a free will when the future is already fixed if everything is predetermined is it possible to have free will at all not possible to have a real free will but we can have the experience of free will not real free will how can we have experience of free will very simple method block the knowledge of the future that is very simple it's not difficult at all block the knowledge of the future and you think i am going to do this i am going to make that little realizing that thinking of yours i can do this or that is predetermined when we here sitting here as seekers of truth we hear people say everything is predetermined no but i can change it not realizing the words i can change it are predetermined people think events are predetermined no all thoughts are predetermined completely all decision making and the logic going behind it predetermined that is why it looks like free will if the if our logic in the head was not predetermined we wouldn't have any free will at all but because the logic works is placed like this that we can argue and have options i can go this way or that way where is the free will i decide and then we decide we look at the pages oh, it is already decided i think like this that i'll do this but because i didn't know i will do like this i thought i have free will now this is the most remarkable thing that has happened that in spite of the fact 
we have no real free will we have a real true experience of free will imagine how it's created so beautifully what is the benefit of all this arrangement the arrangement was made so that we have an ability as consciousness we have an ability to discover ourselves now notice one interesting feature when we go to sleep and have a dream we don't have this body this body is sleeping a different body is moving but the body has the same self as this body that is sleeping no change at all is never that somebody else is moving you are moving the same self is moving same self is there in the dream same self self is there in the wakeful state same self is in the imaginary state inside the same self is that creates the mind the same self is that which creates everything the same self continues to be the reality can you imagine that there is all our experiences are based upon is self existing that supposed to be the most self evident truth that is self exist that we exist that we know we are existing if the self is continuously the same never changes never changes no matter where you are everything else changes then if the definition of truth and reality is that which never changes the only thing you can discover is never changes is yourself everything else changes then discover the self if you want to find the truth and discovering the self is simply going further into the process by which we evolved and created outside go backwards inside can all be found inside i am sharing these experiences with you because no matter how much we are involved how much our karma our destinies have put us in difficult situations we can function entirely separately in the discovery of our own self the two are not connected people are constantly complaining i have to put attention on my job i have no time for meditation i have so many problems to handle i can't have time for meditation and i said meditation you are calling it a ritual or you have to find time to do something that's not meditation meditation can be done 24/7 who am i when you ponder in your head who am i who is functioning who is inside the body who is inside the inner body where does mind come from where am i thinking from that contemplation goes on all the time that's meditation no matter what your condition you can always meditate so that is why don't make it a ritual because religions have been established to convert spirituality into rituals that's what i have noticed i went to study at harvard university on a fellowship to study economics and business and government but on the side i went to study religion comparative religion just just out of curiosity i took a course in there and they had a huge library where i could find so many books widener library very wide library called the widener and i studied 11 major religions try to discover what is the common with them hardly anything was common little bit of hint was that you can find the truth inside but the inside was also placed outside that god is inside but look up up for him that god is inside you they all said but you have to go somewhere to look for him outside in a church in synagogue temple somewhere you have to go somewhere out to find something that is inside religion is saying that and you have to perform a lot of rituals outside you have to give donations you have to survive, make the priest survive each of these you have to have a whole social network outside not inside so i discovered one common thing in all religion as being practiced today they all said we are the only truth all others are false each one said this is the only one that is true all others are false which is so fundamentally against the very principle of, of the founders of all religions saying that the religion spirituality is for all humanity not for a group a religion makes them for a small group and even within a religion they divide 
saw the history of Christianity there. They saw so many divisions, so many denominations, and each denomination making sub-denominations. There are today 25 types of Christianity, 25 types of churches we can go to, and people going to one church will not go to the other. I said, that is also, you worship Christ there also, you worship God there also. So that's not my church. That's how we have used spirituality in religion. Islam was for all humanity. Said this was not for, it was not a religion for the Muslimin. The Quran says it's for the Alameen, for the whole world. The Quran says, Muhammad says, Prophet says, it's for the whole world. They will say, no, no, no. Only those who are following this, who have been baptized into Islam, they can only be following this. Not only that. Do you believe that the Khalifas were really actual true followers of uh, Muhammad? Or do you think Ali was also there, his son-in-law? If you don't believe one or the other, then what do you do? Every year, the Sunnis believe in the Khalifas and Shias believe in Ali, kill each other. They kill each other in the name of God. Both are shouting, I watched myself. Allah Akbar, God is great, so I'll kill you. Both are following the same Muhammad, same Prophet, same Allah. Can you imagine what religion has done? I, I examined, I was surprised. And these are supposed to be agencies, venues for practicing spirituality. Don't have to go to any such place. This is the place. And amongst them, people have come up and said, this is the truth, and we killed them. We killed those people. No, we didn't like what they were saying. They were saying everything is inside. Kingdom of God is inside. The whole heaven is inside. Our swarg, dark, all are inside. And we killed those people. I am only mentioning this because the spirituality has always been inside. Never outside. Why are we running outside? When the whole thing is available to us here. No matter what job you are doing, you can still practice the spiritual meditation. No matter what your condition is, no matter what your karma is, you can still practice meditation. The only thing required, only thing required, is seeking to go to the truth. Seeking to go to your true home where you belong. And that is why the atheist who came to me was a seeker. He didn't come to me to discuss anything. He came to me because he found that I might give him an answer. And I gave him the answer. That you are a seeker in your soul. Our soul is part of the total. Never separate it. People call it a spiritual journey. I also used to call it a journey. Because I was given a strange example. I was given an example that to our soul, our unit of consciousness here, is like a drop of consciousness from the ocean of consciousness. Our true home is an ocean. And we are drops somehow got away from the ocean, far away, and now we have to struggle hard through religion, through spirituality, through meditation, through various kinds of efforts we have to make for the drop to travel back and go on a spiritual journey and go merge in the ocean. That's how it is described to me. And I, it didn't appeal to me. I am telling you when I was very young how I rejected this idea. I said, I'm not going to follow spirituality. If this is true, if this is true, that we are a drop from the ocean, separated from the ocean, you have to struggle hard to go and merge in the ocean, I will not follow it. For two simple reasons. I am enjoying my life with a drop. I don't want to lose it. I lose it if I go into the ocean. Second reason, what will the ocean gain? One more drop, it won't even care for it. One more drop has come into it. It's a lose-lose game. This spiritual path is no good. But I was wrong. The description given to me was wrong. The truth was very different. The truth was, I was the ocean all the time. 
and within the ocean of the drop. I could become small by my awareness, I could become big with my awareness. It's a game of awareness. It's a game of how much you can shrink your awareness and how much you can expand your awareness. That made sense to me. I often give an example. Here's a glass of water. It's got drops of water. How many drops? Depending on the size. I can make a thousand drops of it. I can make a million. I can make a billion. I can make a trillion. Smaller and smaller. Have they left the glass? No. They're still there. They're still part of the glass of water. But I make them small or big or the whole glass merely by change of my awareness. That's exactly what is our condition. We have contracted our awareness to the size of a separated single soul. We are not left out. There is no journey involved. What we call a journey is merely recovering our own awareness of our totality. And the method that we seek to go within, each level enlarges our size. Each level enlarges the universe. Each level show that we are getting closer to the total. Eventually, we are the total. And everything that you see, every person you see, every life form you see, every universe you see is part of a single self. Now, this is not just a story. This is achievable. Can you imagine that this very ultimate thing is achievable? And when I say we all like to go to our true home, that's where I mean where we are exactly in totality and everything generates from there. We belong there. We are there. We never left it. We lost the awareness of it. Get back the awareness. Means are available to us even where we are here. Completely blinded by coverings upon ourselves. Just a cover. First cover was very subtle. Could not be seen. It was the cover of individuation. Then the drops Glass of water became drops of water in the glass. It was merely a cover, invisible. It's just awareness. Awareness created the many. And the many and the one were at the same time because no time had been created. So the one and the many at the same time were the first cover upon us that individuation is the reality. It was created just by changing awareness. Second cover little more visible. The cover of the mind to create time, space and events, which is more visible because we are seeing it, experiencing it 24-7, thinking mind. Big cover. We call it the causal body sometimes. We call our mind a causal body because it caused all experiences in time, space to happen. All experiences happened in the causal plane, which we call the causal body. It's our mind. And the mind also was created on the copy of our own totality. Just like we were one total consciousness and became individuated, we first created one machine, the largest computer called the universal mind. And then took parts of the program of that mind and created individuation of the mind. And each individuated mind attached to individuated soul and created a new experience of time and space. And then we generated new sense perceptions. Then this body. The whole system is merely covering ourselves with more and more of equipment to have new experiences. How do we discover who we are? Just go the reverse. Reverse engineering. Just go backwards. Become unconscious of the physical body. Become unconscious of sense perceptions. Become unconscious of how the mind works. You'll find out who you are. And if you remove the unconsciousness of the individuation, you become total. All these processes are possible. Up to the discovery of the mind, discovery of this, we can do it ourselves. Beyond that, it can be done by some means which are effortless. I'll tell you the effortless method in the afternoon. Right now, let's concentrate on the effort part. Effort part is meditate upon the self. Go with it. Not difficult. Don't make it a ritual. Just close eyes. Sit quietly. 
in this body if i imagine myself sitting in the head you can also imagine traveling in the world you can go to the legs and come up with your imagination but that little being not create a being moving and watch it you be there the self must be the self must sit in the head the self must pick up a beautiful chair and sit self must put up a nice mat whatever you are doing outside to meditate do that inside and see how real it becomes put your effort on that when the time for effortlessness will come i will explain it to you thank you very much for very patiently listening to me we have a break now and i join you a little later about 3 o'clock